We are in the Sudanese savannah, one of the least explored regions of Africa. A hunting people, the Mandari, live in this territory as they leave on their daily quest for food. The Mandari do not know that this will be their last hunting expedition. The only clothing the Mandari wear is a corset made of beads, which squeezes their waist and enlarges their torso. The corset increases their endurance during buffalo chases, allowing them to push the animals to exhaustion. Back at the campsite, their enthusiasm is cut short as they are blamed for having killed buffaloes. Recently, the Sudanese government decided to forbid the hunt. The Mandari chief, designated by the government to enforce the new law, tries to intervene. But the hunters argue that the government is very far away in Khartoum and that it has never paid attention to them before. The hunters wonder what could complement their daily diet of peanuts and milk. They decide not to share any of the buffalo meat, arousing the anger of the others. The Mandari chief is becoming more and more unpopular. He is asked to stay out of the quarrel and to keep quiet. The dispute is settled as soon as blood has been shed. In the cool of the evening, mosquitoes start invading the camp where the cows are tied up. The Mandari gather piles of cow dung and set them ablaze to keep the insects away. Driven by thirst, a large herd of elephants rushes to the Nile. Crops, camps, or villages, nothing will stand in their way. Mandari killed 19 elephants, enough to feed all of their people for the entire rainy season.
Yes, uh, here in uh, our um, village Mundari, uh, every day they want to clean uh, the elephant. Of course, the, the meat of an elephant is very good. This hunt became famous in all the villages for miles around. The government also heard of it and sent troops to punish the hunters. After a six hour manhunt, the soldiers gathered all the hunters together to interrogate them and indict them of a crime they cannot understand that of doing what their fathers and grandfathers have done for ages. The commander asks for the old village chief, the one who, it is said, doesn't see with his eyes, but through the wisdom of his heart. The commander orders the old chief to denounce the guilty hunters and tell him where they hid the ivory. You are asking me to turn against my people. I who already see the valley where the old elephants die. I who led the hunt and shed the blood of the beasts that brought us together. You are asking me to force my people to betray our heroes. A long time ago, the night filled with stars invaded my eyes. Today, the night falls on the shoulder of my people. No, the worthy man doesn't answer to the threat of guns. We will all remain silent. The commander orders his soldiers to search the villagers. Contrary to the old chief, the young Mandari chief, siding with the government against his own people, helps the soldiers to find the ivory. The women fake sickness in order not to be mishandled by the soldiers. As the day ends, the soldiers bring back a meager booty. But what can the Mandari do against those armed men who plunder their meat and ivory and take the most courageous hunters to jail? Afraid for their beads, the prisoners entrust them to their friends. However, diamond cuts diamond, and as soon as the soldiers are gone, the hunters who were not arrested recover most of the meat hidden in the swamps of the Nile, in a place known only by them, away from the crocodiles and from the army. Sharing the cooked elephant paws, 
the Mandari hunters sing many stories about the fight of the male elephant, the heroism of the first hunter who dared throwing his spear at the giant animal and received the ivory to make a bracelet. They dream of the huge herds they will not be able to hunt anymore. Indeed, they will soon learn that from now on, the elephant hunting will be reserved to the white hunters who will pay precious money for the right to shoot the great beasts with their guns. Malagia, <laughs> Malagia, 